This video is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I know that it's been quite some time, but we are back, hopefully for good. So I figured that today's story was a little perfect because I just moved into a new apartment and I figured it would be a good first story back considering that that was a big life change I had and it has truly helped me get back into recording and getting back into things. So I hope you guys enjoyed a little nod to my, you know, real life happenings. And yes, I am so happy to be back. And if you want to get caught up on anything, I did a live stream uh, before all of this. So I will link that down below and that should catch you up on all of my life updates if you care about me personally at all. If not, that's okay. I hope you enjoyed the story and stay creepy everyone. See you soon. So, this is kind of weird. I'm not sure how to approach this. If anyone that's reading this has any advice, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm a second year college student and I'm an atrociously light sleeper. I could not stand living in the dorms with a roommate. It was pretty tough on me, and so I opted to get an apartment all to myself about 15 minutes away from campus. I don't mind the commute, and I'm more than willing to make this sacrifice to get my own space. Going into it, I was super excited. I've always valued independence, and this was exactly what I was looking for. Of course I had been to the apartment complex prior to signing the lease. It seemed like a steal. I met some of the residents, everyone seemed really nice, including the management, which I've been told is rare. I got absolutely no bad vibes, which is surprising because normally my gut is pretty good at picking up when something is off. But like I said, everything was going well. Eventually move-in day came along and everything was settled pretty quickly. I didn't notice anything at first, I'm not sure why. I think it was because I was so busy with school and work. I rarely interacted with the neighbors or management. I tend to keep to myself. And that was that. It wasn't until about two weeks had passed that I started to pick up on some things that were a little off. The first realization was that I had never, and I mean never, seen a single resident out after dark. I generally get back from campus pretty late because I like to study in the library. Not once have I seen someone coming home late or even so much as seen a light on in their rooms. This struck me as odd, but I honestly didn't give it much thought and just brushed it off. After all, I probably have seen people after dark. I just didn't make note of it, right? After this, I made a point to look for people if I was coming home late, and over time, I finally let myself believe it was true. I had spoken with the neighbors on several occasions. They were a nice young couple sharing a studio apartment. They made a point to welcome me to the complex, which was nice. The apartment on the other side, as far as I know, is vacant. Despite knowing that couple, bumping into one or the other occasionally, I had never seen them after the sun had set. I had never seen any resident nor management. The service desk would be empty, except for a small sign that says, 24-hour help number with the number listed below. This is weird, right? I wasn't overreacting or anything when I got a bad feeling about this whole situation. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Maybe through some crazy coincidence, everyone that lives here just goes to sleep really early? This carried on for about a week after my initial realization. Eventually, the whole apartment complex seemed a little dead. I was on campus for the vast majority of the day, so I ended up never really seeing anyone. I ended up bumping into the boyfriend from next door while we were heading out to go to work and school respectively. He was running a little late, but nonetheless I asked, Hey, have you ever noticed no one comes out after dark here? It's kinda spooky. <laughs> His lighthearted personality immediately dropped. It was like standing next to a completely different person. He stood there, glanced at his watch, then around us, as if he expected someone to be listening. He made eye contact with me, eyes wide. His lips worked without sound, forming the words, Don't. Look. Or at least, that's what I thought they were. After just another moment, he took a deep breath, plastered a smile on his face, and said, 
Sorry, did you say something? Damn, I'm gonna be late. Then he left. What. The. Fuck. Clearly the guy was a nutjob who I should avoid, but his mouthed words, don't look, stuck with me. Ever since this weird-ass conversation I had with him, I've heard what I'd describe as a faint scratching coming from the unit next to mine, opposite of the couple's place. Some weird shit is going on here, and I'm not sure I even want to get involved. I know this was stupid, but I just kept on keeping on. I still wouldn't see anyone outside after the sun had set, but I had just accepted that at this point. Same with the scratching, which I initially thought must be rats in the walls. Called a guy out there. No evidence of it at all. You'd be surprised with what you can get used to when presented with no other options. I avoid the neighbors still, but I've noticed that we haven't run into each other since that don't look incident. Yesterday, though, I pulled into my spot of the complex parking lot and I saw him sitting in his car. This wouldn't have been strange, but it was 10 o'clock p.m. The sun had set. I probably stared at him for much longer than was socially acceptable. I just couldn't get past it. It seemed so out of place after so much time of getting used to never seeing anyone. Then, there he was. It took me a while to decide what I should do. It looked like he was in some kind of emotional distress. I was so fucking stupid. I already knew he wasn't stable because of that weird episode. I approached him and knocked on the window. Hey, are you okay? Uh, he whipped around to face me, tears streaming down his face. Fear permeated his eyes as he stared at me. Then there was resignation. He slowly got out of the car, head down, and walked all the way to his apartment. He didn't say a word. I followed him at a comfortable distance. Then he disappeared into his doorway. As soon as I entered my apartment, I immediately realized how loud the scratching was. Normally, you could only have heard it in the bedroom, putting your ear to the wall, but I could hear it now, just standing by my door. Okay, it was already a weird night. I'm not going to put up with this too. I had wrote down the 24-hour help number from the service desk. I dialed it into my phone, but as soon as I pressed the call button, the scratching immediately stopped. This left me a little shocked. It barely registered when a robotic voice on the other end of the line answered. The number you are calling is currently not in service. Clearly there were rats in the walls or something. I didn't want them to come back and there was no way I was going to be able to fall asleep. I must have wrote the wrong number down. I went down to the service desk to confirm the number on the sign. But there was someone sitting there. I had never seen her before. She asked if I needed help with anything. A little dumbfounded, I eventually explained the scratching in the walls. She said that management would call someone in the morning. I don't really know what's going on. It's weird, right? I'm not overreacting. If any one of these things happened as an isolated event, I wouldn't think anything of it. But something is strange here. I'll keep updating on what happens here on out. Update 1 Fuck! I don't know what I've gotten myself into, but things have escalated. Fast. For the record, the scratching never stopped, and I'm convinced management never called anyone. But last night, I saw the empty apartment's door was slightly ajar, so I decided to check it out. I just fucking walked in. I don't know why. It was like I was in some kind of daze. I don't understand. It's a little hazy. I walked into the room. There wasn't any furniture. All I remember seeing were these scratch marks. They ranged from thin and shallow to clean through the drywall. There was no order to them. They were everywhere. The floor, the walls, the ceiling, the back of the door, everywhere. As soon as I took a few steps in, I became paralyzed with fear. I had felt breath on the back of my neck. I heard it. I felt it. There were no lights in the room but the faint moonlight on my back showed that there was another shadow merging and melded with my own. I don't know what the fuck it was. It was almost human. I just don't understand. Some underutilized survival instinct kicked in. I was in danger. Don't. Look. I closed my eyes. 
The breath on my neck was cold. I took a step back, expecting to bump into the... thing. Nothing. I still felt its breath on my neck. I knew it was still there. It took every ounce of my willpower not to open my eyes. Not to look. One step at a time. Eventually, I felt the flooring under my feet change. I could still sense the presence of the thing. Don't. Look. I would not open my eyes. Not yet. I slammed the door to the apartment shut and heard the automatic click of the lock moving into place. It was gone. Don't ask me how I knew this. It was primal instinct, something I had the privilege to not experience till this point in my life. Update 2. I don't go out after dark anymore. It, it feels like I'm being watched. The scratching seems to become louder the more lights I have on, so I turn all of them off. I'm living in fear. Update 3. Um, uh, as long as I'm back before dark, everything is okay. Everything will be fine. It's okay. I haven't seen my neighbor since my encounter with that thing. Update 4. I just heard screaming coming from my neighbor's apartment. I want to help, but the sun just set. I... I can't help. Update 5. The screaming didn't stop last night. I don't think anyone called the police. Why didn't I call the police? I called the police. The sun will be up soon. Update 6. His... his eyes... His... his fucking eyes were gone. I, I, I only saw a glimpse of the room after he was taken to the hospital. There was blood everywhere. Scratch marks everywhere. I asked one of the officers what happened. They said, Found him holding what was left of a corpse of a female, likely his girlfriend. He couldn't talk because of severe and likely permanent vocal cord damage caused by his prolonged screaming. Oh, and it looks like he scooped out his own eyes. The officer next to him mentioned that the lunatic was likely going to be in jail for a long time. Then they all started to argue back and forth on if he'll be sent to an institution for the criminally insane or not. He wasn't insane. He didn't kill his girlfriend. I wanted to defend him, but how? He took out his own fucking eyes. Don't. Look. Update 7. I can't get that stupid phrase out of my head. Don't. Look. I caught myself writing it over and over on a notebook instead of doing homework absentmindedly today. I'm leaving this godforsaken place. Today. It's not just that thing. Something is weird here. I don't care about solving it. I don't care. I've been living in fear. I hope no one has to experience this. Just remember and take my story as a warning. Please, I'm begging you, don't look. <laughs>